Everybody, it's Lynn Forsyth here and I am going to be doing a little bit of gel press playing today I'm gonna be working with the impressibles now when I first saw these I was like well what do you do with them I'm not really quite sure so I just pulled out some papers and started to play um, and these are some of the pulls that I got not even sure what I'm gonna use any of these for it could be an art journal page could be a collage something something but anyways this was my play that I had using multiple colors and all different kinds of things so I'm just going to show you how I did that play now I did kind of add another one in today so what I'm using I'm gonna be working is with the seven by seven impressibles okay so I have overlapping circles this one is called squares and squares kind of I don't know if you can really kind of see what that is, but it's literally squares and squares, but it gives you these really cool diamond, I don't know, that looks like fun. And then this one is just called repeat circles. I've got Dina Wakely's um, paints here, evergreen, tangerine, lemon, blushing, ocean, whoops, blackberry, and lapis. So I'm going to use these over here on the side. You'll see I've got a six by six gel press, which I'm going to use as my um, paint plate. This is where I'm going to pull my color from. So I've got some vintage goodies here. This is patterned paper. Um, this is paper that came out of a farm book in which they charted the weather. Um, I guess it affects the flavoring of the milk. Um, is what I've heard got a music sheet always have to have a good sheet of music in your polls and then I have these old um, paper bags that I think are gonna make some really cool um, journal pages so this is probably gonna end up being a junk journal but for right now we're just gonna enjoy the process of doing some polls during my gel press play okay I'm gonna put my music on play and off I go I'll see you on the other side so as you can see, I've loaded two acrylic paints onto the six by six gel press and I have a roller and I'm just intermittently, randomly, however you want to call it, applying the paint onto the seven by seven repeat circle impressible. So I just wanted to multi-load those circles so that they would have a bit of each color on them. Next, what I did was I took a little bit of white plate paint and I placed it onto another six by six gel press. But as you can see, I picked up some of the paint that was on the impressible and I didn't want to waste the beautifulness of it. So I brayered it out on another piece of paper. So you can see here, I've just taken the piece of paper bag and I'm pressing it onto that beautiful impressible and let's see ha ah, there it is absolutely gorgeous now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit more white paint onto the 6x6 gel press and I'm gonna brayer that over the impressible because there's still some color on there that I didn't pick up but I really kind of wanted this to have a nice dusty white um, matte look to it so once again I'm gonna use oh I just did a quick little tap and pull there. Now I'm gonna place the whole paper bag sheet onto the impressible and rub it down. So then we will get to see, there it is, ta-da, beautiful. Now, as you saw in that previous clip, there was all that beautiful paint on that six by six plate and you don't wanna waste it. So I just took a piece of that patterned paper and put it on there and pulled it off and just the glorious, yummy goodness that I got. Look at that. Yay! Okay, so in this one, you can see I did it just a little bit different. I didn't have the colors side by side. I had them under each other so you can see it's kind of a blended color effect and I absolutely love that. Once again, doing the pull on the paper bag 
paper and I was looking at it and decided this side needed just a little bit more of the yellow. All right, so I wanted to show you all the pulls that I got from my gel press play. I know this is really kind of fast, but I just wanted you to be able to see what I had done um, and on the various sheets of paper and how cool and pretty they came out. It was so much fun in that the paint pulls off of the six by six are just gorgeous. So I've got a lot to work with. So here it is. I just took a little piece of yarn, um, some thread and some vintage lace that I have. And that's my tie for the book. So for the flower on the front, all I did was I took a piece of leftover cardstock that I had, drew a flower onto the back of it, cut it out. Then I used the cutout as my pattern for the back piece. So anyways, when I had done some of my pulls, I did it on both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be anything. Doesn't even have to really end up being circular. I just kind of do them all. All right. So here it is. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm just going to cut, cut a spiral. And I'm keeping it kind of thin right here because I didn't want it, I don't want it really high. So I'm just gonna keep going round and round, cutting my spiral. Oops, get a little big there. Round and round, that's how you get dizzy. And then what I do is I leave a little piece here. This is the pad and this is what I'm gonna glue this all to. So typically there's always kind of a little point right there and there's kind of a little point right there, but all I'm going to do is take this and roll this. All right. And why this is so super cool is because there's colors on both sides. Usually when I make these rolled flowers, there's only colors on one side. So what I'm doing is I'm just rolling with these two. I hold it here, get a new grip, roll, hold, and that's all I'm doing. Just kind of rotating and rolling. All right, so I've got it all rolled up. Got it to the point where I want to see if it's going to work. Then I'm going to kind of let it go and see how it got bigger because all the spiral wasn't being held. I'm just going to take a wad of multi-medium here. And I'll hold it for a second so that it can set up. And that's how I created this um, spiral flower in the middle. All right. And I do like to crush them. That's just kind of me. All right, and that's how you get your spiral flower. And here it is, my completed project. Okay, so let's open this up and take a walk inside. Here's the cover. Look at this wire on here, how much fun. Okay, and it's basically interactive. I created all of these tags to go in little pockets. I also used some acrylic markers that I have called graffiti and I went in and did a little bit of mark making here, there and everywhere. Once again, more interactive tags. I got this paper mesh here. You can see where I adhere down the pattern um, paper that I used to make the pulls off of the 12 by 12 press little cut pieces, just so much fun bright vibrant colors another one of the flowers once again i sewed this just with some twine i have so there you have it here is my completed journal now what to put inside of it hope you enjoyed my gel press play and stop back again look forward to seeing you have a creative day. Bye.